All right, well, I am here with Mitch from Electric Cuts, and uh, Mitch is up in Canada right now, and thank you so much, Mitch, for taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. Um, Mitch uh, and I were talking a few weeks ago. Mitch has this really cool company in, in Canada where he is doing all of his landscaping work with electric machines. So I guess my first question to you, Mitch, is what made you think of doing this with, um, with electric lawn mowers and trimmers and all that as opposed to the regular gas powered ones well uh initially i guess it started with uh my interest in tesla and elon musk and so from there i just thought some way to be different right because there's lots of people that have lawn care companies and it's just you just go out and get a truck and trailer and it's easy and lots of people do it they come and go Mm -hmm. but uh just to be different i guess i thought that that would be a good route to take well, you definitely are different. So, are there <laughs> have you have you come across any other landscapers in your area that are doing what you're doing? Oh no, no. Most of them. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, they they kind of laugh at me a little bit, I think. <laughs> really? So, when yeah. did you get started doing this? When did you first do this? Um, well, I first started the lawn care part of it in 2014, so it's been a few years. Okay. Uh, basically, just after I had graduated from college. Okay. And then and, when uh, when in, when you first started, were you electric then? Yep. Okay, yep. so from the very beginning. And so um, did, you know, your first customers, were they like, ah, I don't know if I want to go with an electric lawnmower company, or, or no, did I they think, care? I think they, initially, they just needed their lawn cut, right? So they didn't really care whether it was gas or electric. It made no difference to them as long as the job was done. But uh, I think one of the advantages was... Uh, that I was able to start originally with electric. Yeah, I think it would be a lot harder for a company who has already invested all the money into the gasoline and equipment to be able to switch over. So it's kind of an advantage that I was just starting just when it was becoming viable to do it all electric, right? Now, you've told me that you probably are saving money. You said that I think, what, it's 100 times cheaper to be running your electric uh, machines than it is to be gas? How did you figure that out? So I'm using uh, kind of generalization calculations. Okay. So if you, I'm looking at it on my computer here. If you consider like a gasoline push mower, this is just for push mowers because that's all I use right now. Okay. So if one of those uses a gallon per hour and you can cut about half an acre per hour. Okay. uh, With a gasoline mower. Um, I figure that, um, it takes like 400 watts of electricity to cut the same amount. Okay. Um, so that works out to three cents in electricity versus, versus like $4 in gasoline, something like that. Wow. (laughs) So it it is, I mean, it's not like one of these things where it's just 2% cheaper or something. This is remarkably, this is like two orders of magnitude cheaper to operate. Yeah, just wow. based on the the gasoline versus electricity cost. Right. That's off peak cost because we have um, there's off peak, mid peak, and on peak costs for our electricity. Okay. So if I would, you know, I'm working all day, so I would plug everything in at night, and that would be if I charged everything off of the grid oh, at so, night. And so at night, late at night, you go off peak. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Now. Somewhere down the road, you got a really cool trailer with some really cool solar panels on it. Tell me about that. Is that something you made yourself? Yep. So that was uh, just this past winter when I'm kind of off season, right? have lots of time on my hands. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I decided that we would try to build uh, this solar canopy, I guess, for the trailer. I had the trailer. And we're showing some pictures of it right now. So, and, and. is this like something you designed yourself? Yep. Yeah, that was my dad and I. We came up with this design. It kind of has a like a roof, a peaked roof. That's not really for efficiency at all. That's just to be able to. Um, that's just for visibility, I guess. So people know that when you're looking from the road, you can clearly see that it's solar panels, right? Uh, I if see. If it was just if everything was flat, you might not see it. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a marketing thing that we came up with. And I guess it is having the peak like that is more structurally 
I guess stronger for the structure. But uh, yeah, it worked out. We put the frame together, and uh, the the solar panels are just from Canadian Tire. It's like a, a department store that we have here. Okay. And uh, so they're not like any sort of fancy solar panels or anything, but the uh, the whole system, yeah, it came together really well, and it's been working amazingly well. It was sort of an experiment to begin with, but uh, yeah, it's working better than I could have imagined. So the solar panels are attached to an inverter, I assume? Yeah, so the solar panels, each bank, so there's 10 up there, and each is a bank of five. Okay. They each have a, a charge controller, and then those charge controllers go into uh, two deep cycle lead acid batteries. Okay. Just as an intermediary between the inverter and the charge controllers. Okay. And then from those 12 volt batteries, it goes to the inverter. It's a little bit inefficient. It gets inverted from 12 volt to 120. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into all the chargers, which generally charges at 36 volts. Gotcha. So yeah. how much of your power comes from the solar panels now? So I think it's between like 90 and 95 percent. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. So basically you leave your stuff you know, plugged in in the trailer and the solar panels charge most of it up. Yep. Yep. So generally when I'm out, it's sunny anyway. So when it's in direct sunlight, there's way too much electricity than I can possibly use. Like everything's charged all the time if it's sunny. Gotcha. Wow. But uh, when we have a stretch of a couple of days that are cloudy, and I'm if I'm working throughout those days, then sometimes I'll have to top up on off of the grid when I get home. But other than that, yeah, it's all solar. That's great. Now, you were telling me that you have some clients who actually appreciate the fact that you are electric, and you have some clients who don't really even know or care. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's so the advantage? I think all of them, all yeah. of them love the quiet. Okay. Because the tools are so much more quiet than, than gasoline, tools. Uh huh. So they all agree on that. But some of them, again, they just want their lawn cut sort of thing. They don't really care how it's done. They don't care if it's environmentally friendly or not. Right. But right. others, that's you know the main reason why they hired me was because I'm using electric equipment. So what percentage of your clients do you think hired you because you are electric? Um, right now, not very many, I don't think. Okay. Maybe 10%. Okay. But uh, I think it's a lot of the customers that I have now, they've been recommended. They're sort of a few steps away from friends or family. So it's kind of, uh, I don't know how to say it. but Like word of mouth kind of. Yeah, yeah. So they haven't really researched the company or anything like that they just a friend of them just tells them oh this this is who cuts my lawn and they just go with that sort of thing but i'm seeing more and more at, since i had the panels put on this year and had the trailer all outfitted with decals and everything i never had that before i never had oh that was any just this signs year. or okay yeah so this year's the first year with any sort of advertising and since i started doing that people have been starting to call specifically for that reason. That's awesome. Now, mm -hmm. you um, you were mentioning that like you can mow someone's lawn like, you know, at five o'clock when it's dinner time and um, it doesn't bother anyone because it's quiet. Yeah, yeah. And then how about you, the operator? Is it better for you um, working with these electric machines rather than gas powered ones? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't have to wear ear protection. That's the biggest thing. So. We just we listen to music. We have earbuds in, and uh, like it's safe to to be using all this stuff without any ear protection. I had one guy actually the other day. He stopped. He stopped his truck in traffic and was leaning out the window, telling me that I should have ear protection in <laughs> because he didn't know that it was. <laughs> He thought I should have like these big earmuffs on. Right, right. And I was like, oh no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> He's like, oh okay. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, are you uh, a reservation holder for the Model Three? Is that something that you're lined up for, or not, or what? No, I uh, I haven't put down any sort of deposit for that. If they came out with a with an electric truck that could tow, I don't know, ten thousand pounds, 
then uh, then you're signed up. You're good to go. Yeah, then I would sign up. But I just bought a brand new truck, so <laughs> might might be a while, right? Okay. So I yeah. mean, we did hear that the Tesla semi. I mean, the Tesla pickup truck is coming out um, maybe in a couple of years. So would yeah. would that be on the right horizon for you? Maybe when it, when the time oh, yeah. came. Yeah, definitely. I would definitely consider it. That's cool, because yeah, it's supposed to have a place to plug in, you know, tools and be able to charge off the big battery. So that that could be really yeah, useful be for perfect. you. Um, so now, have you grown at all since you started in terms of the number of clients? Oh yeah. Um, so at the very beginning, I only had, you know, it was uh, like ten to twenty people, and then every year since then, it's kind of it's grown definitely. This year, I have between 50 and 60 regular people wow and there's uh and then there's always kind of people that just call for just a one-time thing like trimming or whatever do you think you might yeah, be so the, expanding into like getting employees next year well i have someone that helps me ha has been helping me this year but uh definitely i'll have to you know, consider getting another crew maybe soon. I'm not sure. <laughs> nice. Second crew of electric cut. I love the sound yeah. of that. That's awesome. Now, for all those naysayers out there who say that like, okay, well, you know, these electric lawnmowers, they're not going to, they're not going to cut it. Um, what, what do you say to them? Um, I say that they should try one themselves. I think they would be pleasantly surprised if they were to try one themselves. I see as I'm driving around, there's lots of people that have that just use them personally right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they have tons of different brands to choose from and different styles and stuff so um, especially but, with the lithium ion batteries so the ones you're operating right now are, are are lead acid batteries right they're an older model yeah so when i started in back in 2014 that was basically it was it had the most energy so you could go the furthest without uh without recharging um so now let's talk about maintenance of your equipment so when you do when you go to small gas powered engines i mean my experience has been that there's just constantly something not working a choke isn't mm -hmm. working you have to take them apart and fix them what has your experience been with your electric um equipment uh really good i haven't really done a whole lot of maintenance on other than sharpening the blades i well, mean there's really there's nothing really to do with them and we're the, talking we're talking, this isn't just a homeowner who uses his equipment, you know, once every couple of weeks. You're using it every day, multiple times a day. Yeah, so these mowers were never intended to <laughs> to be used. To do what I'm you're using. doing with them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're so, working. So, yeah, 50 lawns, 50 lawns a week. Uh, they were never, I think they were intended for maybe one or two a week. <laughs> wow. Have you seen any degradation in terms of the power or the um, length of battery charge or anything like that? Uh, the original battery that was from 2013, it it uh, doesn't last quite as long as the brand new ones, but it's still I still use it and it still works fine. Wow. But uh, the one thing that was kind of funny was uh, I went into Lowe's one day, and you know how they have those they have a place to put uh, like batteries to be recycled. Uh huh. So I saw one of my mower batteries there. Mm hmm. Uh, in the recycle bin, so I asked them if I could take it just mm -hmm. to see if I could do something with it right. And they said sure so I took it uh, and I opened it up so there's a case that you can open and uh -huh. inside there's three 12 volt uh, Like cells I guess okay, and they're just the uh, they're like the mobility scooter Batteries basically okay, so they're they're a standard battery There's millions of them all over the place and they just wire three of them in series to get the 36 volts gotcha and one of them was all bulged and deformed so i knew that you know that must be the problem mm -hmm. the, whoever had it before probably left it out all winter or something like right, that right so i just i took it out i went on amazon bought a new one for like 30 bucks and, and put it back in put everything back in and it was fine it's been working fine Good for you since. that's awesome <laughs> so i did a I got, you know, those batteries are relatively expensive, brand new. Right. So I just took the one cell out, replaced it, and it was good to go. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. 
I, I'm just so impressed by what you're doing because you had nobody who led the way for you. It's not like you could have watched someone else's, you know, YouTube channel or read someone else's <laughs> book about it. You're just like, I'm going to try it. And you've been expanding each each year, it seems like. You've been adding new things, like you've been adding your solar-powered trailer and you've been expanding the number of customers. It's just, and now you've got decals on your trailer, so you're getting more customers. Like, this is just <laughs> really cool to hear about, especially since this means that every time you're out there doing a lawn, you're emitting no emissions into the atmosphere. Right, yep. Uh, and that's, the, uh, that's the main goal. <laughs> that's so cool. I guess I'm surprised because I thought that you know, we down here in the U.S., we we think that you Canadians are just so green. And I we, <laughs> I kind of thought that all your customers would be because you were electric. But it's it's funny to hear that they just want their lawns cut, and you can do that. Um, and as yeah. long as you can do that, they don't care if it's electric or gas. Yep. Yeah. Well, in Sarnia, um, we have a a big oil refinery presence. Uh, so a lot of uh, a lot of the industry here is based around the oil refineries. Interesting. So there's lots of people that, you know, they drive big trucks and they, not saying that I don't, but <laughs> right, right. some people are less concerned about the environment than others, I guess. Right. Wow. It's just, it's just really great to hear about your story and it's really great to get the word out to other people um, who are either in your area and can hire you or to other people who might have the same idea who might be on the other side of the world and want to start a company of, of whatever type and run it off electricity instead of gas. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Well, thank you so much for talking to me today and uh, sharing your story. That and and thank you for this awesome drone footage that you got of you at work. Um, <laughs> this is it's really fun to see you working with these electric tools and to hear that they they really do work year in year out. Yep. Thanks for having me. All right. It was so good meeting you, Mitch. You too. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Hey guys, it's Bobby from Now You Know, and thank you so much for watching this episode. We loved interviewing Mitch from Electricut. We've left a link in the description below to his website, so you can check out his company and all he does. He's really cool, he's got a lot of cool things going on, so definitely go uh, check him out. Also make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. We do a lot of videos on Tesla. Me and uh, my coworker Brent do some video editing videos, so that's pretty fun. So yeah. Make sure you leave a like, leave a comment. Thank you, Mitch. Now you know. Woo! Woo! <laughs>